Hey, everybody, and welcome back to episode 10 of The Overlay, a poker podcast, brought to you by CCG Poker Radio. That's my professional radio voice. Sounds great, actually. I couldn't even tell if you're recording or not. I think if this whole, like, you know, COVID thing doesn't doesn't blow over anytime soon, I could maybe get a job as, like, a voice actor. I think I agree. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good. Well, thank you for listening again. We're going to do some uh, overlay shout outs before the episode or really right now to kind of get people used to hearing about it. Last week, we talked about our sponsors for the first time. It only took us nine episodes to say thank you and mention them. I'm not going to mention them now, but we are going to mention is it is a great help to the podcast and to us here at The Overlay if you could subscribe and review our podcast on whatever podcast uh, platform you're listening to. I think most people listen to us on Apple Podcasts, and it's super easy. You can give us a five-star review. Um, if you don't want to give us a five-star review, then then just don't review us. Um, you're right. It's either five-star or Five or nothing. Like, literally, options. we don't want, like, a four-star review. If, if do you we don't... do half-stars? I think in Maybe all four. honesty, though, if anybody who's made it 10 episodes in, they're probably like, yeah, this is a five-star podcast for sure. I agree. Nobody's going to listen to this if you thought it was a three-star podcast. I mean, I haven't listened to any podcast for 10 episodes. So I was looking at just super fast, odd story about reviews. A guy left a review for CCG, and he gave it three stars. Okay. Which is, you know, it's middle of the road. I always find review sites to be kind of odd because it's like you either get one or five, and the people that leave fives are like diehard fans that want to, like, scream from the rooftops of how great your company is or it's a one-star review because the guy had a, a bad, experience bad experience and he wants to just kind of get the last word in by leaving a one-star review so i always take reviews as very odd but you you don't always get like a lot of three-star reviews i think that's the least likely number that somebody will leave so anyways the guy leaves a three-star review and he was like great place however locals or regs and uh dealers seem to be talking a lot about getting dealt good hands maybe some cheating going on watch these guys why in god's green earth would you leave a three-star review for a place that you thought was cheating like right uh that's agreed. goofy as that's all really goofy. hell so two things today folks please subscribe and review like whatever the case may be and whatever app that you're listening to apple podcasts or spotify are our two number one platforms thank you for listening as always um please also consider if you've been to either ccg or paramount down in texas to leave us a review on google there as well google facebook whatever the case may be uh right now the overlay only has um a twitter handle and it's at the overlay underscore pod uh we're getting some more uh followers on there and we're growing this organically we're not paying for anything so by all means if you could do that that would be great and if not enjoy the show what are we going to talk about today brandon um today's episode poker cul- poker culture 101 yeah poker culture we're 101. Going, we're diving into the the ins and outs of the poker world how it differs from the regular the world. world. The regular world. Because there is quite a difference between the poker world and the regular world. Oh, yeah. Once you walk into a, a poker room in general, um, if it's a home game, if it's a charity event, um, big or small charity events, because sometimes you go to like little rinky dink charity events that are like on kitchen tables, and you're playing with bicycle chips. And there's still like that kind of like persona that it gives off and there's just certain things about a poker room that people don't always realize and if you don't if you've never played or ever been in one it's very different um in general just the culture and the way things are it's not as easy to know kind of what's going on either because like if you like i'm trying to think of like something that's like a parallel like if i go to the community center and i want to play basketball because you do that right you you play basketball at your community center i mean you don't right now but in, yeah, in yeah. the past you have. Yep. Right? Like you walk in, you can instantly see like which guys are legit players, which guys are just scrubs, which guys are just there because they're, they're hiding from... Right, they're posing on the sideline. Right, they're like just trying to get an Instagram pick. Yeah. Right. Like you can always tell at least within the first 30 seconds of walking in kind of who the players are, what's going on, and what game you're probably going to feel most comfortable at by your own skill set, right? Yep. Um, although with poker... One, you don't really get to choose your own spot. You get to choose the game you play, but if there's five, one, three games going or one, two games or whatever the game you're playing, it's not like you get to be like, I want that table right there. Like, right. Maybe you, eventually you can get over there, but yeah, you yeah. can walk in and be like, I want that. I want that seat right there. 
Although that happens a lot at CCG. But anyways, um, so yeah, poker culture. We're going to go over a couple of topics today, and I'm sure we're going to hop all over the place in our normal hodgepodge, wing it kind of way. Somebody asked us today, um, hey, you guys going to have like a script or an outline of what you're going to talk about? And my answer was unequivocally, no. We, nope, ne- we're we, never, we never have any idea what we're going to talk about. This is all frontline essential work that we're doing right here. Ah, I see what you did there. That was yeah, nice vocabulary. Nice. Throwing it out there. Poker culture in general. We wanted to a couple of different topics. We want to talk about the different types of players, so like the stereotypes of players. Poker language in itself, because poker definitely has its own language. Um, and then kind of the unwritten rules or laws that uh, govern the poker world that not everybody knows especially new players that are just breaking into live poker you know they've been playing poker with their friends and at home and and now they want to kind of venture out to whatever game that they're going to make it to so where do you want to start brando i want to start with the stereotypes because that's my favorite stereotypes rip it how many stereotypes are there i mean there's tons can we just like is this like full like i can just go into my stereotypes and not sound like an asshole or like yeah, this is like what, this is what's like my, yeah, this is not what's my range of freedom here. I think it's pretty big. I think this is not about like a specific person. Like we can give one shout out to one type of player. Pat um is a, a regular at CCG. He's a regular at the horseshoe. He is full blown and has fully embraced the fact that he is just a nit. Yep. He's okay with he it. He embraces it, he loves it, and he he Right. Yeah. If there was a knit pride parade, he would go. <laughs> he would probably be the Grand Marshal. Of the Knit Day Parade. Yep. And he'd have a little army with him, too. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah there's tons save, of nits out there. I won't save names, but... Freaking nits. Um, so I, I, my generalizations are old guys are tight, and if they're not tight, they're bad. Okay. So there's that. That's my view. I'm like, oh, this old guy is either rock solid, and the tight old guys are, like, good and tough to play. Against. I'm not, like... Oh, they're crusty, like crusty veterans is what I always refer to. But like, to if you as. look, if you look at like an HPT main event, sixteen hundred final table, there's always two two old guys. Yeah, rock solid, sixty five year old. I mean, so that type of player, ABC he, poker player. Yeah, he's just playing straight two thousand like six poker. Yeah, he's even not less. playing range versus range. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's playing very. Right. He's textbook. not going to get out of line with ace four suited. Right. He's going to have ace king and kings and aces. And if he gets cooler at aces versus kings, that's how he's probably going to get out of the tournament. Correct. And you could very easily, when that man three bets and you've got ace queen, you it's like a no brainer. Like you just insta fold. Correct. And then if the old guy isn't so tight, then I feel like usually they're kind of bad because they don't have like the characteristics of the tight old guy and they're trying to be like the young aggressive kid a little too much where they're kind of in over their head. So that's where I kind of put them in like the middle ground of just like, they don't really know what they're doing. And what would that be called? Well, that's just, that's the other, that's just like fish. A, a fish, a, right? Man, a fish. Yeah. So all guys either go into one of two categories. They're either crusty veterans that are, Good, rock-solid players you should respect when they make a raise, and you can probably bluff them a little bit more because you're able to, if you're playing that ace-four goofy range, that you could get them off of a a hand, right? Yep. Or it's the complete 180-degree opposite. Yep, that's the the opposite. The complete opposite side of the coin is just full-blown fish. Guy has no idea what the hell he's doing. He's just punting money around, throwing it in, and hoping to see what happens. There's no real middle ground. Uh. Fish is our first vocabulary word of the day. Well, let's not go too crazy with jumping around. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I was just throwing that little hint there. You can so talk then, about go ahead. I want to. I just want to. I just want to rattle through some some uh, stereotypes here. You got if you got like a twenty five year old kid with a beard and glasses who's listening to Spotify. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put him as like solid, good, creative. Gonna stay away from him until he shows me something different. I'm gonna like try and not get into pots with that kid. Okay. I just have like a, like a pro persona about them that, um, you know, not like intimidates you, but like makes you aware of them very quickly. Like I said, in the last podcast, you want to put on a show and it'd be something different. I want to try to be the pro that acts like a fish. I don't want to, I don't want to like, I want to be the, the knit that tries to act loose. I don't want to pull the pad and just embrace the nittiness or be the pro 
that like embraces the proiness. If that makes does that make sense? Oh, I mean, sure. Yeah. Then yeah. So that that's another stereotype. So first, I I label the old guys and I try and figure them out. Then I label the young kids and try and figure them out. Then you have like the kind of spacey, don't really know what they're doing. They don't look comfortable in their chair. You can kind of tell they're looking around or, you know, they're playing almost every hand. They're talking to their buddies on the rail. Those are kind of like the spots in the game maybe where I would be like, all right, well, this kid is coming here to have fun, entertaining. I'm going to maybe zero in on him. So I'm going to three bet that kid a lot more than I'm going to three bet the kid with the glasses and the beard. That's 25. And how many times you three vet in the old crusty veteran with aces? Yeah. (laughs) Your range there is pretty small. So then I move over to the females, which Uh, those uh are. Be careful here. It's 2020. Let's not get crazy. But they are the, they're the biggest wild cards. Ah, because I feel like they get to play the female card. Like they get to have the most, it's tough to make a generalization or a stereotype about them. Cause like you want to think that they're tight and that they play good and solid and they're conservative and you know, all these stereotypes of a female poker player, but then they could just be one up in you and playing that card. And they're really just bluffing the shit out of you every hand. And you really have no idea. So women actually so, have a little bit of an advantage because exactly what you said earlier, you want to be a tight player who gets perceived as a loose player Whereas women kind of do the exact opposite. They are perceived as tight players, but women can play far looser. Good Lord, that seems wrong to say, but I like it. Yes. Uh, women can play you know, a much wider range and get through a lot of different stuff because of the fact that most guys will just immediately stereotype women and say, all right, they're just tight, um, not even tight aggressive, just kind of tight, you know, is that nitty this players? Is good. Yeah, it's great. I don't know, how, like, like, like. For example, I we we were gonna talk about like uh, Jill. She was on one of our CCG final tables of like uh, I think the Valentine's Day Bounty Massacre or one of those. And somebody came up to me and was like, "Man, Jill just plays so tight." I'm like, "Are you guys crazy? Like, she just wants you to think that." Like, I didn't say that, but I was just like, right. She is not as anywhere near as tight as you think that she would be. Like, I, I've seen Jill just like snap call off with ace four offsuit she's probably right but like you know these are just things uncharacteristic of somebody that when somebody says oh she plays so tight i mean pat looks down at ace four offsuit and he just looks it without even like hesitating she can very much play that exact scenario that you talk about you want people to think you're tight and pl- and that that way you can play loose and exploit it or the opposite you know have people think you're uh, very loose and then you could tighten it up the Jerry Yang effect um and then you got the Jill effect the Jill effect is when they think you're tight and you can loosen up and win more pots or the Jerry effect and they think you're incredibly loose and when you've got really good hands you get paid off because of the fact that they just always put you on garbage yep right it's the Jerry Yang effect versus the uh, the Jill event Jill I don't, is do you have any other stereotypes? That's those are those are my main ones. I got the females, the old guys, the pro looking guys, and the fishy looking guys. I mean, I think that, that kind of sums up like the normal stereotypes. I mean, there's different variations of each and every one of those in varying degrees of all of them. But I mean, yeah, if you sit down at a table, you're very much always gonna find one or two old guys, one one lady. I was gonna throw in like the drunk guy, you know, like yeah, your right. you know, your drunk or, or high guy that's just gonna be there, you know, and Either he's pretending to just play that off or not, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, that is true. The drunk guy is. The drunk guy normally comes out later. Thing. You know, he's not normally like a mid morning kind of drunk guy. Otherwise, unless you're in right. Vegas, in which case you could get the drunk guy earlier. But he's def- the nine p.m. to till they stop serving alcohol, two forty five kind of guy. Yeah, and then he either goes home with whatever money he's got left because he's wasted. Or he lost it all and he's going home, bro. But like I think those the, guys are fun to play with. They absolutely are. They make the game more exciting. And there's different ways that other players can affect the game that makes it better, makes it more fun, makes it a lot less fun. I mean, and that's what people don't always understand about a poker game is that it's you can't have a poker game. And I know I say this a lot. You can't have a poker game that is all fish. You can't have a poker game that are all nits. You can't have a poker game that's all pro pro sharks out there like you got to get a good mix of everything you need a couple of tight guys to keep the loose aggressive guys in line um you also need some loose aggressive guys to drive the game otherwise 
every orbit, it's, you know, muck, 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 small blind, big blind shop. Muck, 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 small blind, big blind shop, you know? Right, like, that's not that's a game not that fun. everybody enjoys it. No, and if that happens when I'm playing, if I see one muck all the way to the small big blind and they chop it up, like, I'm like, all right, that's not happening for at least another hour. I don't care what happens. Like, my <laughs> instantly my, my radar goes off. That's one thing I find is that I'm just going to make sure we drive this game to get bigger. And my goal is always to not, run out of money before I can catch that really big hand, whatever it is. Either I've got a really good hand and I get paid off or I get that, you know, flush draw, straight draw, whatever the case is. And I drill it on the river and get paid off big because I know the other guys got that big hand aces or Kings or set or something along those lines. So at least that's what I'm. I got one more. I got one more really quick one. It's borderline here, but you know, I think that it's actually kind of prevalent in the poker world. Mm-hmm. You got like the the drug dealers. The drug dealers. You got the guys that got three cell phones in front of them. They got bling all over the place. Okay. They are hilariously fun to play with because they just don't care about money. They're just like this is their burning money left and right. They are buying with tens and they don't care. <laughs> and they got three cell phones and they're FaceTiming with their females and they got rings on tattoos. I mean, you know, it's, it's endless, you know, but it's just, they are, they go along with the drunk guys. They drive the game. They're going to get it in. They're going to run it once. And, and total, like, total, whatever dis- happens, happens. Yeah. The total disrespect or the total, um, just carefree attitude of money in general. Like I do not They're care about this. At the poker table. This is nothing. Uh huh. Wow. Those guys are fun. If you can find those a game with that fun. guy. You definitely right. want to one see one or two it. of those guys in, in a game. And I don't care how many nits there are; it's going to be fun. Well, and that's the times that you get like other people there texting out and be like, "Dude, such such and such here is like, get over here now! Like, you got to get in on some of this action because it's so good." Yes, yes, it's good. Yep. All right. So that's that's uh, that's generalization. Kind of basic types reference. of players, stereotypes from each type of player, and kind of how you should maybe not how to play them, but just how to identify them. Right. I think that's right. And obviously, all people within the stereotypes are going to vary. Like a stereotype is a stereotype for a reason. It's not true. Like across all right forms, you know, every old guy isn't tight, and every female isn't good and good at being perceived at at one way or the other, and every drug dealer isn't bad and but I mean, just in general, ways to label people out. Just so if you know you got seven guys on Spotify with glasses and a beard that are 25, maybe get a table change. Yeah. Playing Chinese poker on their phone. Correct. Yeah, that's like a first. If I sit down, the guy next to me has got, um, you know, Chinese poker going up on his phone, like a couple of different you know, apps running like that guy instantly give, all right, give him a little bit more respect, give him a little bit wide berth, be like, all right, I'm going to make sure if I get involved in a hand that I can do so accordingly. It's kind of like going into the wild west and you know, you don't want to get into a gunfight with a gunslinger. Like you instantly like, all right, that's a guy I got to be afraid of. That guy should stay away from that guy could kick his ass. That guy, I don't know what the hell he's doing. So I should be careful. Like you literally, you got to think of every poker table. Like you're walking into that bar in the old West, like the little swinging doors pop open. Everybody looks up at you. They're instantly trying to get the idea of who you are and what kind of player are you. And you should be doing the same for them. It's kind of like the whole rounders. If you haven't spotted the sucker at the table within the first half hour, you are the sucker. Yep. Yeah. I've never spotted a lot of truth to that. I've never spotted a sucker at a table ever. Well, they never make it that long. I won't. I'll. I won't comment on that. <laughs> we'll comment on that one. All right. So, <laughs> poker culture, besides stereotypes and and the, just the different types of players, the other thing we wanted to kind of key on today is language. Poker language. Poker has its own its own language. Yes. I well, mean, and you are very I, articulate in general. Well, you know, it's. You know, when you walk in a poker room, you're going to hear words like fish and whale and bad beat and set and set mining and range. range. And like all, all these words where if like if you're in the real world and the guy's like, man, I mean, what's my perceived rating? It's your perceived range. You, you're, somebody's going to look at you like, the what are you, you talking, talking about? about? Right. Or like this dude's a fish or needling or, you know, all, all needle these, is like, a good words. one because I find that when I hang out with my non poker player friends, I'm like, dude, nice needle. And the guy be like, what? What? What does that mean? You know, you know, Scott Van Pelt last night said the word needle on a uh, sports center. I was like, all right, 
This guy's at the gambling. This guy world. knows. He knows. This guy, he knows. Um, yeah, so you're going to just see a lot of different terminology that you wouldn't see at the barber or anywhere else. And like talking about why it's like talking about ahead. playing on the bubble. Yep. Like, oh, I bubbled People that tournament. Like, you what? So you want to go through a couple of these? Can we, can we, I think the big one is set versus trips. Well, something we talked about when we were like, what are we going to talk about today? And I was like, things Shh, they th- think that we're winging it. Yeah. <laughs> things that I think poker players use a lot and, and use it incorrectly. Nothing sends me on tilt even harder, which again, it's stuff that I'll say to like my wife, like I am on massive tilt right now. She's like, I, I don't, what? What do you? I don't even know what that means. And I've tried to explain what tilt means, which is fine. I don't think we need oh, to explain yeah. what tilt, tilt is here one. on on a poker podcast. But you know, the one thing that I think that maybe it's a good and bad thing, and it actually kind of leads us into other other topics about unwritten rules and laws. So we'll kind of jumble these together. Is that you know, if you've got Ace Five in your hand and the flop comes Five Five Six, you don't have a set of fives. You have trip fives. Yep. Nothing sends me on tilt more when a guy's like, oh, I lost with a set of fives. I was like, oh, you know what happened? I had ace five and the flop came five, five, X. I'm just like, yeah, okay. Anytime you want to play, I'd be happy to join your game. <laughs> you can spot a fish in that game. Yeah, that, that guy is a full-blown. He is out of water. He should be flopping around next to the table. He is such a fish because I cannot imagine anybody saying that. And I, everybody does it occasionally where they'll just say it incorrectly. Or maybe they use the term differently because they want people to think that they had pocket fives and a five hit the board. And then um, that's, you know, that's a set. And, and Because you know. let me get, yeah, sets are way, way, way um, stronger than trips. For sure. I mean, they aren't even the same. That's why they're different. They're Correct. not even in the same category. Which is why it's so aggravating to hear somebody tell a poker story or a bad beat story, and then they talk about the fact that it's, oh, I had, you know, trips. Like, bro, what are you even doing in the hand with ace five? And then you're mad about it. That's not a bad beat. Like, you didn't get a bad beat. You just played poorly, got lucky in the flop, and then now you're mad because you lost, and they, they catch up. <laughs> which I literally like just... You're, like, when, when you flop trips, you're getting action from... Better trips and better full houses. Correct. Because um, the guy with five, five six five, that just you right got five six. The right. guy that just the guy with five X on a five five X flop, your ace five gets a lot smaller at that point. That means you're basically just gonna lose the max. Correct. Which and is this good. is speaking in this is speaking in PLO terms, guys. Probably. Yeah, I mean ace, ace, more ace so, five and hold them is pretty more so pretty than yeah, hold them, but but yeah, yeah you, you know, got trips in PLO, you can fold. Get rid of them. Easily. Because there's a very good chance that guy's got a set, right? And your trips are drawing drawing dead. dead. Right. So a set is when you got a pocket pair and you flop a set, which is extremely stronger than flopping trips. Now, we could also talk about the fact that we we also like to talk about full houses Uh and uh, or or a full boat. But then there's also different types of boats you can have. Like, Brandon, what can you have? You can have a canoe. Canoe is what? Canoe would be like if the board is uh, four, five, five, nine, and you have four, five, or right. five, nine. That's a canoe. It's the smallest boat possible. Right. And, and they, then I, what's the term for the, for like the nut boat? Yeah. yeah what's the difference? Maybe it's I, just canoe. Like a, I remember we had a conversation where we had like given them different names, like a yacht yeah, or something. Yeah, it, it was, it might be a yacht. Yeah. But anyways, like it just goes like boat. canoe yeah. is another canoe is one. Canoe when you have the worst boat. Right. You're just, you're just screwed. You're going to lose more right. money on that hand than anything else. And how often have you folded a canoe when there's like, you know, whatever. You're just convinced that you cannot – you're the third guy to call on a hand. It's a bot size bet. You're like, I cannot be good here with four or five with a, fl- you know, with a board of four, five, five, nine jack and just be like – I can't be good. Like my four, like somebody's got jack fives. Somebody's got a set of nines. Somebody's got a set of jacks. Like it's just, I cannot possibly be good here in any way, shape or form. You fold. And then the one guy's like, I was bluffing. I only got a five. Fives are good. You know? Yeah. (laughs) And the guy wins. You talk yourself out of a call because you're like, I can't get involved in a three way pot, which again, that's like the worst. One of those worst hands to be in is when like 
your third to act and the first guy's bluffing and then the second guy knows that the first guy's bluffing and he calls so he calls lighter and, and than th- he normally should and then you get into a spot where it's like man i can't be good here correct you talk yourself yeah. about it and the guy and the guy's just like in in all fairness the guy in the middle of that hand's like well i've never been raised by this guy over here so he's obviously not a super strong hand like i could very much get away with a bet or a raise or something along those lines and you know be fine with it so it's good yeah. knowing your position yeah. Um, what other vocab words? Obviously, tilt. Um, uh, you know, fish, whale. I like those two. Those I like are, a whale. I like too when people call, like, use. Guppy. They call like guppies. They're like little fish. Little baby fish. I like when people use fish. poker terms in real life with non poker players. Like uh, somebody, Alex Ice Hayes, was telling me a story. He's like, Yeah, my wife was just going on and on about this story, and I was super losing interest. So he's like, Halfway through a story, I just yell, Clock. <laughs> and she like stumbled and she's like what and he's what? Like, yeah, never mind keep going keep going and it's funny because to a person in the poker world that's hilarious it's it great sense. but anybody else you're just like why would you yell clock in the middle right. of my story it does not make sense in any way shape um, or form 20 second side story my favorite dealer at the horseshoe mo he um were i'm playing hold him because i'm waiting for a plo seat the action is so slow it's been two minutes and i'm in the nine seat and mo just is like gosh he's like what's that thing like he's just talking to me he's like man what's that thing on like the wall that like tells time and i was like a clock and he's like clock table seven (laughs) and like i didn't even realize that he was trying to get me he was trying to to bait you into doing it oh yeah it's great and i did it i I had no idea and i was like it's a clock and he's like clock table 17 and i was just like Wow. Oh, that's awesome. He's like, he's like, he's like seat nine called the clock. And I'm like, hey, it's been a long time. Yeah, I just play along with it. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. <laughs> but pretty, pretty nice little. So then there's a, another one angle. Like use the word, use the word angle. An angle shoot, right? That's something. not even that. Just like, you know, you take an angle, you use an angle. There's different angles. Oh, I got you. You're like, using it in you positive know, and negative terms. Right. Just I the, the word negative. angle and all, right, all of the realm of words of angle. Somebody in the real world, or you know, the regular non-poker world, right? Be like, what do you what do you mean an angle? Like, yeah, you mean like an obtuse, like hundred and forty degree angle? I mean, no, I'm like it's an angle. It's a sideways little view on things. Could be positive or negative. And I, I use that word all the time in to my non-poker friends in there. Clueless. Well, the other thing, too, is when you're telling a story and you get super deep into poker terms, which I think sometimes people do to just try to make the story sound better because it's like, oh, I three bet and then this guy four bet jammed all in. And then the under the gun did this and then the cutoff did that. And, you know, it's like you can throw so many words into a story uh, and then the flop came out, you know, to, you know, see, no, you know, I had this guy who would call rainbow flops banana flops. Uh huh. And I still to this day. I'm like, yeah, you know, I got aces, flop comes out all banana, and the guy's like, so I have taken a poker term from my very small home game that I played in 20 years ago to, I still use that term now, I'm just going to make it a thing. When you say banana flop, that means it's one of each suit. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's badoogie, banana badoogie, probably where it came from, maybe. Oh, no, this guy was just a full-blown fish. Oh, just banana. Yeah. It's like wet napkins. When, one. when Paul yelled out wet napkin <laughs> on the river on that PLO game that we were using the RFID table on, I, I literally almost lost it. It's actually one of our most popular videos on YouTube for CCG Poker TV. It's like literally, um, if you haven't checked it out, it's great. It's like one of the first, it's in the first five minutes of the video. It's like a half an hour, like highlight PLO reel of like really cool hands. And it's hilarious because he gets it all in. I think he flopped a a full wrap, which again, that's something that I think people use incorrectly at times. You know, the new PLO players will use a full wrap incorrectly. Could you, anyways, he had a full wrap. He bet it, got called, drilled the turn with the nuts. There was two flush draws out there and he literally yells as the, the river's coming out like, what napkin? And because he just wanted it to be a blank, you know, nothing. And I think right. it really was a two. It could not have been more of a wet napkin. It was like uh-huh. an offsuit two and it was just like, boom, I'm my... My the nuts stay and I'm good. I scooped this big huge pot twice. Um, yeah, what what napkin is is a, a monkey? Monkey, you're looking for a face card. Monkey, that's yeah. more of a gambling term. That's that a gambling mean. term, right? It's from baccarat, where you you want to get you know, yeah. You you want you don't want the score to change. Correct. Baccarat, you want a national so you, ten, so you just you just keep it. 
But yeah, you know, yeah. monkey, 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 monkey. I do that a lot too. I don't think there is a ten in Baccarat. I think nine's the best. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, but if you get a face card, doesn't it not? Does it not change? I don't. It really doesn't know. change. A face card's a zero. Correct. Right. That's so what I meant. Like it doesn't change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Also, a couple other ones that people um misuse is like smooth call or cold call or you know like stuff like that where i don't really want to get into it but like a cold call is like you haven't acted yet and you're you're going cold like somebody raises somebody three bets you cold call like you're you're basically you're you're out to dry you haven't done anything yet and now you're just putting in multiple bets and calling a three bet the yeah pot. right you're calling a three bet but you haven't put any chips in like it's one thing to call a three bet if you've already raised right because you already got half or, a or to get or stuck in the middle right correct yeah and then there's smooth call which is when you're like and there's a lot of different variations of like poker terminology that sometimes is confusing that people you know mix up and use incorrectly where like you know an expert would be like you know they would they would correct you or call you out on it or but it's just stuff that the general public doesn't know about can we go back to a full rep nine six three flop if you got eight seven four five that's the biggest rep you can have. So anybody who thinks if you got like King Queen Jack on 10 9, like, yeah, that's a good rep, but that's not a full rep. That's what Zeus used to call a three quarter rep. Quarter rep. Three quarter right. rep. You, I have three quarter if, rep. If, if it's 10 9 and you have King Queen Jack, you can hit the eight and you can hit the Jack or the Queen or the King. That's four, four outs to hit and it's all to the nuts. So that's a good rep. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like those reps are like powerful and everything, but a full rep is two open enders intertwining with each other. So nine six three, you have the eight seven open under on top, and the four and the five, five on the bottom. On the bottom, so now deuce straight, four straight, five straight, seven straight, eight straight, ten straight. Any of those in between cards that don't pair the board between deuce and ten all make you straights. Now some of them aren't to the nuts, but you still it's still right. like the most the most outs you can have a full wrap of you've got the full option here of everything we can do well let's do a little bit more about um kind of unwritten rules and laws of of the poker world in general things that are either actual rules versus just like you know stuff that people do knowingly and it's just bad etiquette or uncouth to not follow those rules and obviously noobs don't always know about it and uh right because they aren't in the culture they haven't spent enough time in the bubble of the poker world to know these unwritten rules. Right. Like, if you've never watched a baseball game before, you wouldn't know that, like, a guy's not supposed to butt to break up a no-hitter. Oh, I, I, yeah, like, I always forget just, about that one. I mean, I, I'm not... unwritten rule. I, mean, I don't ever needs, think of bunting, so I guess that's... that's uh, just you're just a home run hitter, huh? I'm just, yeah. I'm just... I'm swinging for the fences every time. Uh-huh. So I think the most... Um, the most common and popular and um, universal unwritten rule is, like, Checking it down deep in a tournament when a player's all in. Three ways. Three way action. Yeah. So if it's um a guy's all in, you got two callers. Those two callers are not supposed to bet into one another to try to get the other one. You want to give the guy to get knocked out of the tournament the best odds to get knocked out of the tournament. Which would be facing four cards on the river instead of two. Two, if you're playing or eight if you're playing a PLO tournament. But yes. the whole point of that is it's an unwritten rule of poker. However, it is in direct defiance of the rules of poker it's like my most funny rule because everybody does it it's you are gonna get i don't want to say you're gonna get shit for it but you're definitely gonna get a look or see so like why would you bet that we could have knocked him out like people are gonna say it like they're literally going why didn't you collude with me to get this guy out of the tournament why would you try to do what you're actually supposed to do and protect the field and it's like such a weird um kind of like it's probably like, why didn't you it's cheat? cheating. It's a hundred percent. It's cheating. Yes. 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 I mean, yeah. By definition Logically, of the rules, it is a hundred percent cheating to check it down. And then the only time that it's okay to bet into the other player, at least by like the unwritten rules is if like you turn the nuts, you can bet it. And then if the other guy's out, be like, oh, I got the nuts, you know? Right. Or, or something super strong where the pot, if the pot is meaningful to your chip stack, you know, like, if, if if the guy rips nine big blinds and you and the other person call, there's a 27 big blind pot. If you only got 15 big blinds left or something like that, where this is a major hand for you and you turn two pair or you turn something that you need to protect from a lot of draws or whatever, I mean, it's pretty acceptable to, to rip it in there because just as much as you want to give 
the you want to give the third player who's in the side pot with you the option to beat the guy who's all in. You need that pot just as much as the all in guy needs the pot. Right. So like you still you still have like your own right to fight for it. But in general, you do not want to bluff into a dry side pot to gain zero extra chips, then flip over ace high and have the guy all in win with the pair of twos. Correct. And you got the guy I think fold a pair that, of sixes. It's a rule that people are maybe not unaware of or uneducated on it's not to the extent of that you shouldn't bet ever it's the idea of you should of never bluff picking your spots. you should never semi bluff you should be yes. betting if you have a hand if you've got king jack and the flop comes down king four six and you bet your king and roll over king jack like that's maybe middle middle grounds like borderline like you might get together like dude why would you bet there um but you've got a hand that's in that instance that you just talked about. You know, you've got 15 big blinds left. There's 27 big blinds in the pot. Like, I need that pot. Like, I need it. I need to get, I need to ladder up. I need, to, there's another term for you. I need to, you know, build this chip stack. And that's perfectly okay, I think, even though some people might say it's borderline. Now, you know, I think the worst case scenario there that, again, people are going to get mad at you about probably the whole table, even the guy who's all in. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, if you bluff, and bluff another guy off of a hand and then turn out that you bluffed him off of the winning hand and this guy stays in the tournament, the rest of the field is going to be mad at you. And this actually kind of came up, and I won't say exact, yeah, but it's I, the it exact happened, thing that happened. It was like two buddies were in a tournament, and they're down to like six players left in the tournament, and the third guy goes all in, the two buddies call. And again, they're still playing against each other, but like they're they're – friendly i won't say they're slow playing or doing anything weird but that exact scenario happened where like i can't remember do you remember exactly how it broke down like was one of the buddies was all in and then the other buddy bluffed the other guy out and then he like accused him of punting chips back to the original you know what i'm talking about here yeah i don't remember what happened i thought the kid like said he had quads or something oh that's all even in worse like- he like said he flopped quads. We'll, we'll save that one for a rules episode. If you can actually yeah. say I have quads and get somebody to fold and then roll over a bluff, things of that nature. But I think one of the biggest unwritten rules of poker, especially really just tournament poker, is that if you're three way action all in, the two guys who still have the side action are really not betting into each other. They're going to check it down unless it's an you know very few occasions they're going to be betting and you should never at any point be bluffing into the other player cuz there's just no value in it right especially yeah when there's this is what this is the whole thing of why people are going to get mad at you in addition cuz there's no benefit for you to get the guy to fold when you have seven high when you still have to beat the other guy for Correct. the same amount it's just of chips stupid. there's no side pot yeah there's no all you're doing is net losing for the whole entire table including yourself the only guy you're benefiting is your opponent who will just be like, thanks, man. I can't believe I'm still in the tournament because of you. You know, like, I can't believe, like, just like, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing. It's, it's a teeter-totter of rules here because it's like, you should be protecting the field, but then you're protecting the field by, che- by checking it down. And if you bluff into it, then you're no longer protecting the field. You're kind of benefiting the guy who's, because you're not even benefiting yourself. You're benefiting the other player in the hand. But at the same time, you still want to win the pot. And the best right. way to win the pot is to only be two cards and not four cards. So that's why it's so unwritten. And there's so many different variations of, when it's acceptable to the other eight people for you to bet and when it's not acceptable that like you're going to find people in pe- people's lines are different where, you know, if it's King six, three, some people are like, dude, King Jack, like this is hold them. Like I got a top pair, good kicker. Like I'm not checking this thing down. Right. Like I'm getting you out of there with ace queen. So you don't turn an ace Correct. and win this thing. And then another guy's just like, dude, like, come on, what, what are you doing here? Like if you have a set of Kings, like sure. A set of sixes. And so everyone's line is a little bit different. So everyone of where they think it's acceptable to bet versus your your value of what you're going to get by getting the other guy out does not, you know, benefit the rest of the tournament. All right, well, yep. we've spent plenty of time on this one. I almost feel like this could be a rules uh, whole episode. It is. On... It's so weird. It's so there's so many different outcomes. What are some other unwritten rules slash laws of the poker room that are not actual rules but things that you just don't do? So this one, and this is this. So the other one was the most common. This is the one that's most common for you to get like ousted in the poker world for. Like if you are needling slash tapping the tapping the glass mm-hmm. on the fish, like that is something that is going to upset everyone else at the table, or at least any other good player at the table. Correct. Like you, you do not want to like 
yell or make the fish feel unwanted or make the fish feel bad or that they don't want to be there or that they, they should just go home. Like these are all bad. Do not complain when the fish sticks in with a four high flush straw and you have and top there. sat and he gets there. Like say nice hand, even if it's in your condescending way or whatever, or you're a lot of little say, needle. You're a lot of little right, bit. You're allowed to be like, nice oh, nice hand. Whatever. Cause nobody ever means Correct. it when they say nice hand. Yep. But for you to just bl- put the guy on blast and embarrass them and make them feel uncomfortable is like just so negative EV. It's, it's the worst so, thing you can do. It is the worst thing That's you can do. another funny term, not a funny term, but a term that I use in everyday life that people always are like, what? negative EV, positive EV, you know? Um, it's a weird thing that you can say to other, that your non-poker player friends. How many people out there have non-poker player friends too? I mean, I have like two. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have golf buddies and they gamble. So like we can use gambling terms, but like we, yeah. like when I try to tell a poker story, like when I was, my dad's like, oh, Kenny did really well at the WSOP and got second place in a tournament for like 14K and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, tell us about it. And I like try to like tell them about the tournament. Well, like there's, there's re-entries and they, they just, they have, wait, there, there was actually only 80 players in the tournament, but there was 160 people worth of money in there like they were very confused as to how it goes and that there's like strad well, wasn't it all luck and it's funny to talk and try laddering to ic and there's just Good unlimited Lord, things that you can talk about like, in the poker world that in our world makes perfect sense to say these things oh, i had positive evs so i bet i three bet this under the gun because blah 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 and this was happening and his range perceived range and they're just like whoa no seven idea bigs and, and icm and chip leader and yeah, it's just and we use these just part of our regular vocabulary. Regular vocabulary talking right. talking to a poker audience, we can do that and you guys are all understanding. But like take this out of our bubble and like it is it really is a bubble that we're in and we're in a poker podcast talking about poker, so we're clearly gonna use the terminology. Right. But in general, you know, ninety nine percent of the world thinks we're crazy. Yeah, and it's funny because like people will you know, like when the charity workers, you're trying to explain to them, like poker has uh-huh. its own language. They're the best. Cause like nine times out of 10, the volunteers that are working the, the charity poker events, like they're not poker players or they're, or they're, they're kitchen table poker players, right? They're not yeah. like hardcore in the poker world. They know what the heck you're talking about. So when people are saying words like, oh, what's the rake? What's this? What's the buy? And what's the starting stack? How's this? And they just look at it like, uh, I have no idea. Here's three. Like even something as simple as the blinds. Right. What what's the levels? Like what's, that, what's that what's that timer? What's that timer over right. there ticket? That's up? always a funny one. Uh and then I have to explain yeah. to them how the blinds go up. Wait, wait, there's blinds? They're, they go up all the time? Some people can't see. Well, no, no, they can all see. It's just the the blinds of the tournament, you know. Oh, they want to play cash <laughs> game? No, 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 they don't. Nope. And then a guy will be like, All right, give me three hundred. I want two hundred and uh, red, uh fifty in white and fifty in green. And nickels. They use nickels. Oh, nickels and... is a good one too, but they'll use colors <laughs> red, green, black, and they have no idea what those are either. Um, my other favorite thing is, and it's happened, and I'm not putting anybody on blast or making fun of anyone. It, it, we have all done this in our early poker careers, which I think will track back to what the last unwritten rule that we just talked about is. My favorite thing is when a guy plays in the early bird and he runs up his, you know, what do you start with the early bird? Like 4K in chips? 5K. 5K in chips. He like gets an early double up or triple up. He's got like 15K in chips and he brings his his tournament chips up to the the bank and it's like, I'd like to cash these in. (laughs) (laughs) It's always like, sir, those absolutely have no value whatsoever. Go back to the tournament. Or when they take the tournament chips with them on break. Yes, that's an always. Players, please, if you have new people in, give them a couple of insights. One of them being when you're playing in a tournament, do not take your tournament chips with you when you leave the table because it's something that (laughs) nobody ever listens to. And it's every tournament director always says, any concealed chips are dead chips. And nobody's like, what the hell is a concealed chip? Concealed chip means if you put your chips in your pocket and you take them with you on break to go to the bathroom and you come back in, one, that's disgusting. And two theoretically you should lose those chips now it's always like the guy gives you a, a warning like okay in the future don't do that or they want to put them in their hat and then like well the problem is the only people that are doing it are the people that have never been there before and don't understand so you you're inclined to give them a little bit and of a again, break in the tournament 
poker players Manager. out there, you we need new blood. If we do not get new players in the game, the game dies. Games like horse horse racing, horse race betting, and like bingo, those players are dying off and new players are not feeding the games, right? At some point in the next 100 years, and it's a really long line to give this, bingo will be gone and horse racing will be gone because most people – younger people even me at 40 like i don't play bingo i have no inclination to play bingo like we're never going to go and try to play like night bingo or any like the cool like blacklight bingo that they play like it's just it's very difficult if we run off all of the noobs they'll never turn it then that money never comes into the game it never feeds the players and that's what you need you need some of those players in this ecosystem to make the games better and when pros are running off new players because they make them feel bad for doing something stupid like it's really bad like it would be like playing golf negative ev right that guy might lose a hundred thousand to the poker correct and And i mean this is just it's just generalization but the guy might really enjoy himself and come every single friday night and lose six hundred dollars because he has the money right and have a blast every single saturday you want 50 of those guys in your poker room because if you have 50 of those guys in your poker room your room is thriving and everybody's making money everybody right And it's the pro's responsibility to make them feel at home and like they're enjoying their company and having a good time and not tapping the glass and not not aggravating the fish to where they don't want to come back. They should always want to come back. You never like there's never a better outcome than a fish losing a thousand dollars smiling and saying, thanks. See you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. It's actually funny. It's how I'm going to end the episode. Um, Vinny who moved to Vegas to be a pro, and he's still there, and he's still making it. Hopefully, he's doing okay. Vinny, it's shout-out for you. We miss you. We love you. Stay safe out there. But Vinny told me once, uh, and he's a regular, like, low-stakes cash game player. Plays, you know, 1-3, occasionally plays 2-5, right? Like a low-stakes grinder. And he said to him, my job is not a professional poker player. He's like, my job is to entertain the fish. And I was like, whoa. Whoa mind blown because if you can be a professional poker player and your number one goal is to entertain the fish you know you're going to beat them 85 to 90 percent of the time that you play and if you can have them leaving exactly what you just said guy goes dumps four hundred dollars two two hundred dollar buy-ins in a one-two game and he leaves three beers and he leaves there thinking i had the best time that i've had in a long time and i just lost four hundred dollars like that guy will come back he will feed the games and your life will improve it's positive ev by entertaining the fish never knock on the glass never make fun of another player it's the only time you'll ever hear me preach don't ever pick on a bad player you want bad poker players in the tournament yeah sometimes they're going to get you I mean, if you're an 80% chance to win in, in a tournament, occasionally, one out of five times, that guy's going to win. But you you need him to win those one out of five times so he will continue to come. And also, you don't want him to feel bad the other four times where he loses and you benefit. You want him to go home and go, man, I had a blast today. That was super fun. Right. I want to go and back. And when he bad beats you out of a $1,000 pot, do not make him feel bad for it. Let him go home a winner. They need to win sometimes or they'll never come back. Right. You know, like just... Chalk it up to this guy's money will be back in circulation. If he's going to lose four times and leave with a smile on his face, don't let him make sure he leaves with a smile on his face when he wins a thousand on the fifth. Right. Time. Don't make him feel because, bad. Because, yeah. So it's it really is your responsibility to, you know, entertain the make fish. Make sure that entertain the fish. And, you know, well, I know we're rambling on here, but Greek John does a really good job of that. He is the king of that. He makes every single person have fun at the table. When he's just taking their money consistently, that guy wins consistently more. He's actually been accused of cheating because he's such a good player at doing exactly that. He has a knack of talking you into call when he wants a call, and he has a knack to talk you out of a call when he wants you to fold. All while having fun, and he'll buy you pizza, and he'll buy you a beer. And when he loses six hundred or nine hundred, he'll say nice hand and go home. Because he knows you're and just come holding back on to the it. next day. Yep. And yeah, you're, yep. he is the freaking Bob Hope of low stakes poker. <laughs> just so inter- that entertaining is the those. most unwritten rule of poker. Do not That's... tap the tank. Right. Let the fish win occasionally. Don't let them win. But when they win, don't make them feel bad because everybody right. needs new players because if we don't get new players in, the game will eventually die. Well, if you're going to berate somebody, break, berate the pro and tell him he stinks. He's going to be br- broke in six months and that he, yeah. Yeah, pro, those kind of guys. Pro versus pro fights are always the best. They are. 
All right, well, that's well, that's, gonna, that's it. That's going to do it for episode 10, Poker Culture 101. Maybe we'll follow this up in a, in a couple of months with like... Like 201? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do like a college thing, like a, like a you know, yeah. this is the, the 200 level of poker culture. Right. So This is an introductory, and then we'll get an intermediate, right, this and is we'll a, do advanced poker culture. This is a gen edge course. Oh, I like that, advanced poker culture. Well, this is Poker cu- Culture 101, beginners, and uh, <laughs> how to make them have fun. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, again, we're going to hit it up one more time. Please follow us on Twitter at the overlay underscore pod and uh, be sure to review and subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Brandon, what's your tagline? I got tonight? nothing. In- Indiana's open now, guys. So Indiana's open. Gonna, is... Indiana's oh. open. Illinois is next. Also, happy Cinco de Mayo. Yes. Cinco de Mayo today. Well, Welcome back, USA. That's my new tagline. Welcome back, USA. That could be the next uh, politician's tagline. (laughs) Welcome back, USA. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Bye.